Is it not amazing that the first day of the year 2015, as I stood here before you, I said there's a prayer in my heart. And I couldn't pray it in English. But I would like to pray for you and you pray for me. What was the prayer? Eh, ni bakuo ni kuku. And your Lua Shelore, Kona was okay. O Shemio, O Shemio. And your Lua Shelore, Kona was okay. O Shemio, O Shemio. Mudumala, Jesu, O Lupa. Hallelujah, O Adupa. Only Thank you. You may be seated. All I desire to do today is to give the testimony of my supernatural escape from death. <laughs> you may be seated. Occurrences like what happened to me on the 18th of May, 2015, Monday, about the hours of 8 p.m. or thereafter, about 9. Occurrences like that throw up a number of issues and lessons. Number one, you get to know those who really care about you. And also, you get to know those who are eager to announce your exit from the stage of life. That's why the Yoruba people say, Kadijuka laku, Kawenitio sunkweni, Kaburimburi kafeseko, Kawenitio shinipele. You shut your eyes and pretend like you are dead. <laughs> then you will know those who truly will mourn. And while walking on the way, just hit your head, your leg deliberately or your foot deliberately. And watch out those who say, oh, sorry about that. Igea ba fenti. Ofi bu bwara shegun. Eni aniko feni loju. O fatasenu. The tree that you think was strong for you to lean upon in the days of adversity was full of thorns. And the people you think will, if anything happens to you and they need to spread, just blow some air into your, into your eyes, they will go into the kitchen and fill their mouth with pepper so that they can add pain to pain. But let me place on the register this morning my utmost gratitude to God Almighty who spared my life. I have no doubt in my heart that God spared my life for a purpose. And by his grace, I will fulfill that purpose. I will reach my goal. And by his grace, I will fulfill my destiny. Indeed, to God alone belong escapes from death. And for this, we give him all the glory. And all the praise and all the adoration. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let me also place on the register my gratitude to the team that went with me to the event. First and the least, authentic Mrs. B. (laughs) 
ยิงข้าวดูมาเคียนดาทิ้งมาคอสเดียร์แอนดาทิ้งโซจีมิดมีเรียลไลซ์เอาคัมชีวอร์สชีจัสต์ทุกชาร์จอิทวอสเวนไอเพลย์ดิวิดีโอคลิปของ exactly what happened That I heard her shout, "Jesus, Jesus!" And that's the most important name to call. <laughs> What is inside of you will come out when you are under pressure. <laughs> I think she shouted Jesus and brought the master on the scene, but he was there before she shouted. I thank you, Mrs. B. I was told she assured all and told them it's okay. When they gave me a bottle of coke, and I pulled it to myself, he said, "This fellow is all right." <laughs> How can I thank you know? My indefatigable Amor Bearers. Marcus Adioya, who took the heat. The podium was coming straight to hit my head. He pulled his hand there and hit him, and divided his biceps into two. When I watched the clip, I saw how all of them sprang into action. Pastor Biola was all over me like a mighty prayer warrior. I wonder what she was praying at that time. Sometimes God does not wait for our prayers. She was there; you could see. I watched the clip, and I saw Sergio Latero. Doing like this to camera, cut it off, cut it off. There are sons who will expose the nakedness of their father, and there are sons who will cover him in his weakness. May the Lord cover you all. I saw all of them. Inka Odomake was there too. And so was Dr. Akimba, and when Inka's influence, what could have been breaking news that would have caused unnecessary panic was averted. <laughs> He went to all the newsmen there and said, "Gentlemen, block out. Don't put this in your press." Even Basket Mouth, who was the MC, he said, "Pastor Bakari is my father. I'll give you the tape to take out the clip of where he fell from the entire thing, and he did so." And he called KJ. What's her name? KJ the plug and said, "Block it out." Don't put anything like that on the internet. What can I say about the medical team at Reddington Hospital? Doctor Nobawale had closed for the day and was already home. Just getting home when he had the news that a VIP was in an emergency situation, dropped the things and entered his car and quickly ran back to the hospital. And when he saw me, he said, "Oh, this is more than VIP." I was told. Thank God for a well-equipped 21st-century hospital in Lagos, Nigeria. They quickly moved me in to do MRI scan in case anything was wrong with the brain. 
They did this CT scan. But the following day, they carried out angiography. The man who actually carried out was a consultant who flew in from America that morning and was rushed to the hospital to carry it out. They did all kinds of blood works. Check my brain, check my heart, check my kidney, check my liver, check my pancreas, check my prostate, check my eyes, and they found nothing wrong. All the vital organs, according to them, were working perfectly. My sense of humor did not depart. Though I was not conscious of my environment. They told me I kept on asking questions. What happened? Where are we? And they kept on answering me and I kept on repeating the questions. And then I said, uh, they said we're coming from a lecture. I said, what was the topic of the lecture? I said, is this seven steps to heaven? When the doctors agreed to take me to MRI and they were rolling me in, I stopped and I said, are you APC or PDP? <laughs> After the MRI, uh, this is a joke, she said I did not like at all. They spread the white, whatever it is, sheet on me up to here, and they stop. I said, why are you stopping? If I'm dead, this is the way they do it to dead people. You spread it over my head. <laughs> so yesterday when I wore white clothes, I said, I don't want to see you in white. <laughs> The only time I gave the doctors and nurses and my assistants a serious care was when we were going for the last test on Wednesday, they call it stress test. We were going to put me on a stress machine to see whether everything was okay before I could be discharged. I was going like this, they were following me, and we got to the lift, and I, <laughs> I did like that. And then I said, I bureau. <laughs> The only person who was not affected was Mrs. B. I know this man is full of pranks. <laughs> I'm thankful to God. I'm very proud of the children he has blessed me with. Several times I had their mother saying to them, go home. I ain't going nowhere. Dad is here and we are here. And every time I set my eyes on them, I thank God that I did not labor in vain. As bad as it was the first night, I called Bumi to my bedside. I said, let me continue with the message for Sunday. Take your pain. And I began to dictate to him how a man, a righteous man should choose his friends wisely. You must choose those who challenge you and not those who are like, you know. And I kept on giving scriptures and she was writing. I said, keep it for me in case I forget. But they were there. My staff are exceptionally good people, exceptionally good people. They were all there. I knew when I saw Pastor Bjorn that this was not the outfit you wore the day we were going. He said, yes. I asked my friend to bring me a change of garment. They all stood there. Ebenezer, online me, even the Mopo. They all inconvenienced themselves and stayed put for my sake. God will not forsake you. The hospital management had to do a decoy. Dr. Lawani came to tell him himself. 
I said, sir, we had to tell them downstairs to tell anybody that you were not here because the pressure will be too much on you and the trunk of people that will come to the hospital uh, will be just too many. But some still came. My friend and brother, Alola Fola Adiola, landed in Nigeria that day and came straight to the hospital. And gave me some lectures at moderation. Alufa, Alufa, Monsofueu, Eshintobada, Wangupaniu, Monsofueu. He will bring it, turn into Mr. Duba Bruton, will I go? Be Kurumbi, who will allow him to care, or say, make you back up at your move on. I wish I could interpret all that. He said, look at your room. It's so wonderful. He said, I'm to I've been telling you, you take too much upon yourself. Take it easy. Well, lessons I'm learning. Jimmy Lawal, my dearest Aburo, fought his way through the airport in Kaduna in spite of all the shortages of fuel. I made sure I was by my bedside the second day. He had called on phone, and I told him not to bother, that I'm well. But General Buhari told him, you must see him face to face and know his condition. And he came and said, Egmo, as soon as you leave here, straight to England for a second opinion. Dr. Tunji Olaola Fair broke through the hospital protocol and so my staff was not allowed to see me. The former governor of Aqua Ibom, Victor Atta, broke all through protocol, went straight to the director. He said, is he here or not? Tell me the truth or lie to me. <laughs> and then they allowed him to see me. He said, I just want to see you because you can't afford to die. You can't die. He left his house just for that purpose. I was discharged on Wednesday with a clean bill of health. They located what was wrong though, exhaustion and dehydration. That had not been taking enough water and so I'm on compulsory medication of two liters of water per day. <laughs> the cause of exhaustion, too much work, too much people pressure. I was reminded I was airborne seven times in seven days. The long list of visitors turned back from my house on Thursday after I'd gotten home, I could not believe. I had to call and plead with at least one of them. My own 90-year-old papa, Saolani Huajai. I remember sitting with him on Monday before going to that meeting. And when I was to leave, papa said, any of all, that's the way he calls me fondly, pray for us. I said, papa, I don't feel like praying today. You, a surifua. And he said, What's the difference between Ire and Adura? I said, Adura is petition, Ire is blessing. And he looked at me and looked at people. And you were, Oh, Nite. And began to bless me. Thank God that our fathers will bless their offsprings. Pastor Names. Call from England, he panicked a little. And he said, no, uh, please, I need Skype. And they had, they had to connect me to Skype to talk to him so that I could calm everyone down. I'm eternally grateful to everyone who show great concern at this moment. I'm grateful to President Goodluck Jonathan. You needed to see how frantic efforts they made to reach me by phone. 
called someone who called someone. We eventually called Pastor Biola, and my phones were shut off. Pastor Biola called Bumi. Bumi had to tell me the president is trying to reach you. Just for one man. That's, that's more than enough for all my labor. He spoke with me finally on Thursday. And while we were joking, I told him that I need huge help because my budget for water has increased. <laughs> the Attorney General of the Federation did not only speak, did not only speak with me, he mandated Jimmy to ensure that, look, no matter the expenses, nothing must be spared, let's fly him abroad. I didn't know I'm that important. Ogun State Governor called me from Dara several times, they couldn't reach me, and positioned his chief of uh, the secretary to the federal government to make sure he sent text, if I will read it later. And last night, both of them eventually spoke with me. The chief of staff to the president, General Aro Bofa, was kind, not only sent text, ensured that he called me to be sure that I was hale and hearty. I received calls from New Zealand, the uttermost part of the earth, from within Africa and outside. I didn't realize. And when Papa uh, Ayo uh, Adebanjo eventually got to speak with me a second time yesterday because he was on his way to my house, and I said, please don't come, sir. He said, oh, Mabu Shetu, oh, Moye. I said, thank you, sir. The British High Commissioner was so distressed. I said, nothing evil must happen to you. We are praying. I didn't know he's a Christian until I began to see serious prayers from the British High Commissioner. <laughs> I'm grateful to Andrew, Dr. Andrew Popcorn for his concern for me. Pastor Bang has been checking every day. He has actually booked his flight from America to join me in the UK. He said, please, I want you out of that place immediately. And I assured him, I said, let me see the people uh, today at the church so that there will be no panic. Uh, I will go see them. And he said to me, GB, I know you. Once you get there, you hold the microphone and you keep on talking. I said, I'll show you five minutes maximum. My brother and friend and partner in destiny and his wife, Dr. Jonathan David, and his wife called all the way from Malaysia. He called me and was asking about one or two things concerning visa. I was on bed, and, and, and I replied to him. I didn't tell him anything happened. And then he got to know, and he said, what did you just do? I said, well, I didn't want to add problem to your problem. I'm okay. And he said, I set you free from every commitment. Don't come here. Just go and rest. I said, I lie. Are they come. I thank all of you. The Senate president was not allowed to come close to my bed, but he peeped through the room. He used his senatorial power. <laughs> the chairman of church council was behind him. I was seeing all of them because one hand was tied to what you drip. They gave me seven uh, uh, drips in less than 24 hours. I don't take much water, I take tea. I do not know that tea dehydrates. Shetty Yimbo. Uh-huh. Take water. Somebody say water. water. Take water plentifully. Two liters per day minimum. Okay. <laughs> and the other hand was tied to ECG machine that was measuring my blood pressure. It was constantly 120-80. But any time I engage in discussion and I'm talking, my whole life is involved. And the thing is rising. I didn't know talking increases your blood pressure. <laughs> Eating mosoto. <laughs> now lie, I've just started. <laughs> I want to thank all of you who could not reach me. I kept on praying and sending texts and emails. God bless you all. And to some news homes whose desire for exclusive breaking news 
the story overruled their sensitivity and broke they overruled their sensitivity and, and fairness and broke the news across the Cyprus space. I can only thank God for my total recovery. And I have a song for them. Open law, open ball, open she be a nitty coo. Open coo, a woe, marry walk well. To real jam with tin rock, cook berry. Oh, jam with tin rasa, cook my bear. Oh, to two key major noodle. He shall do a meal, cook my bear. Motiki eleso jigmini o Motiki eleso jigmini o la oluwa lo hola rami Motiki eleso jigmini Did I see it coming Not quite But I can assure you, I had some premonitions. First, I called my daughter who got married yesterday, Morola Keonifade, Dr. Onifade's daughter, who is my daughter also, and the second dad. I called her about Monday or Sunday. I said, Rolake, your engagement is on Thursday. I don't think I'll be there. And he said, I will not forgive you. Don't play with this thing. Oh. You got to be there. I said, okay, good night. I wasn't there. But I was at the reception yesterday. And people were looking at me like this. Funny. <laughs> when the musician began to sing good song, I couldn't resist it. Uh, I was there for four hours, and I was just doing what I know how to do best. <laughs> I danced. On Monday, I knew something wasn't adding up. I called Pastor Biola. I had an appointment with six people, including members of our church. I said, please cancel all the appointments for today and tell them all I couldn't make it. I apologize. I called some myself. Reverend Oshino guy said, don't be offended. I'm not up to it. I'm tired. When I dropped the phone, I turned to Mrs. B. I said, I don't want to kill myself. I'd started feeling this way before Rotimi's graduation. And I told my family that I was not going. I didn't want to go to that graduation that was too far away. America is too long, too far. So I asked my wife and children to go. So I left for Abuja on Wednesday. And while there I said, ha, what will Rotimi say in future? MB ma, amoni opa. And Jobi, Jobi, Ashura, I don't know, I be ni opa. What will Rotimi say in future? I will go. That's how I commence the journey to America. And on Sunday, when I was parking to come back to Nigeria to go keep appointment with General Buhari, Mrs. B said, hey, why don't you wait here and rest a little? I said, no, I'm on my way. So that's how I went from Lagos to Abuja, Abuja, London, London, Atlanta, Atlanta, London, London, Lagos, Lagos, Abuja. And Abuja back to Lagos, and the rest is history. A good story, though. Every time I look at the mirror, I see a 30-year-old man before the mirror. But last Monday, my body told me, oh, God, you're on your own. I need some break. So he gave me a, a lively lesson, a, a, a lifetime lesson on how not to take too much upon myself, to know how to say goodbye 
let me rest to people. And you know, new. Uh-huh. So now, I put my phone permanently on silence. If I see you ringing, if it's time wasted, I said, just ignore it. If it's somebody I needed to talk to later, I slash it and say, I'm busy now. I've learned that telephone can kill. Sometimes people look at me. This one is my answer. And uh, please hold on. Are alone, Fabo. See you. However, I would have dismissed everything as natural consequences of fatigue and exhaustion of brothers and sisters is more than that. Because after I called to cancel all meetings, I ate and decided to go and sleep. That afternoon, I had a dream. It was an unusual dream. I shared the dream with my family. I was sitting outside. It was not indoor. The some staff and Pastor Biola came to me and said, we need to disburse some funds. Please sign this check. And I look at the check, unusual check. It looks like Manila Gold account and that NIB used to have. We don't have such checks. I wrote the date, 18th May, 2015. I said, you know what, I'm not signing. I'll come back to sign this. I look at crowd over there on the other side of the road. It was an untied road. I said, let me go address those people first. When I finish, I'll come back to sign the check. As I got up to go, I saw a ring on my little finger. Don't wear two rings. Only wear one. And I was looking at the ring. It's unusual. What ring is this? I looked up. And coming from my left side was a humongous giant I'd never seen before. Not the type I'd seen in America. This one was unusually humongous and wore an Igbo attire. I could recognize that. I didn't know his tribe or whatever, or his ethnic, no, but it was a giant, huge man, and it was coming towards me. And all that I knew instinctively to do was to raise the ring up. And as soon as I raised it, he laughed and bypassed me and went on. And I went to the crowd, addressed the crowd, and woke up from the dream. And while I was pondering what manner of dream was this, uh, Pastor Biala got me on phone and said, uh, they, they check for the budget. Are we doing it? I said, no, no, no. When we return. <laughs> Thank God we did it when I returned. Because I returned. <laughs> I said, I returned. 